Hey there friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes. And in this lesson, what I want to show you is a sort of introduction to the style of Dave Rawlings guitar playing, okay? What I just played there was a 32 measure sequence I put together here, and each of the measures has a, a lick or a fill that's sort of borrowed from his wheelhouse of playing. Now, if you don't know who Dave Rawlings is, you're in luck. Um, let me pull up this email really quick that Roy sent in recently. He's asking if I could listen to Dave Rawlings, which I have done many times before, and would you consider doing a lesson on his style? I never like stating that one guitarist is the best, as there are too many best guitarists, but Dave Rawlings has a unique style that I enjoy. Now, Roy, thank you for the email. Very nicely, humbly put there. Dave Rawlings has an amazing style of playing. And don't take it from me, look at what other guitar teachers have done online, right? If you like acoustic, blues, uh, sort of country that vibes, that's exactly what Dave Rawlings' wheelhouse is. He kind of has that Americana, um, little bit of bluegrassy, blues, folk country. It's, it's all kind of there, but it's also really hard to pin down. You know, he's typically playing an acoustic guitar. He typically has Gillian Welsh doing rhythm as his musical partner, and their music is just lovely, right? And Dave Rawlings is typically, he is doing loose rhythm while he's singing, but during the breaks and in between lines of, of vocals, he'll add these little licks and fills that have a real slippery quality to them. That's a quote from uh, Ryan over at Music with Ryan. He talks about these slippery licks when he's describing Dave Rawlings' style, right? Another uh, characteristic is, is dissonance, right? He'll use these notes that you, typically wouldn't want to include because they have that sort of harsh sound, but in the overall context of things, they just sound beautiful, right? And he uses that all the time. Um, Brian over at Active Melody has a lesson or two on that topic. And uh, one other teacher to check out is Eric Haugen on YouTube. He has a bunch of lessons looking at the style of Dave Rawlings playing, okay? So those are th some things to get you started there. But let's dive into this, what I just played right there. I'll walk you through it. It's three different sequences. Instead of just showing you, you know, basic strumming and stuff, what I want to do again is take those chords and I'll talk about the little lick or fill that I put together for each of the chords in the overall progression. And if you want to get the tab and the jam track and all that, the link's in the description and you can head on over to my website and get that if you want to study it outside of this video. All right, so let's dive on in and look at this one. All right, brand new camera angle here. Let's see how this one works. Okay, so sequence to one. Now, three sequences total. This first sequence, so these four chords, the G, the B minor, the C, and the C minor. Now, instead of strumming these, how can we sort of polish them up with some licks and fills, and how can we do those licks and fills in the style of Dave Rawlings? So here is what I put together. Let me play it for you uh, once, and then I'll explain what I did, okay? Now, a really quick note about strumming and filler strums. I have the tabs here, and those sort of show you the main notes I'm playing but you will see my pick occasionally grab other strings. The main school of thought here is whatever chord I'm playing, put your left hand in that chord shape, okay? Whenever I have a note tabbed out, like a lead note, play that lead note, but all other times, if your pick or your finger, if you're playing finger style, if your finger or pick happens to grab any of the strings that are in your chord shape, that's okay, right? That can sort of flesh things out, right? I just wanna call that out. So beginning to end, it'll sound like this, and then I'll talk about the individual licks and fills. So one, two, ready, go. One, two. Let me play it again. That was an alternate ending there. I'll talk about that as well. So really quick, just one by one, talk about these fills. Now the G, super simple one here. All I'm doing is adding a single note, right? This is our G major chord. The note we're gonna be adding is this A note, right? Second fret of the third string. Okay, this is the second degree of the G scale. Now the thing about this note is typically, if you ask me to add flourish to the G chord, I would just go, okay. Right? That's a, sort of our G sus or a transition to a C over G. We're just putting these two fingers down where they would go for a C major. I feel like Dave Rawlings never really does that. I, I, I'm sure he does it in some cases, but in general, that is too on the nose and too cheery for him. He kind of is gonna use something more dissonant a lot of the time, like that, right? 
Now when we say dissonant, what does that mean? By playing the second fret note on the third string and the open second string together, that combination of notes has a little bit of a harsh clash to it, right? Now it doesn't mean it's bad, and it doesn't mean it can't overall sound good and happy and, and work well for our sort of use case here, but just know that that's the sort of thing Dave Rawlings does. And I'm happy I'm doing this lesson because honestly, that's the sort of voicing, a uh, little flourish note I would typically avoid, but I'm doing it here in his style. But So I'm strumming a G, then I'm sort of strumming just strings two, three, and four, or maybe just strings two and three. And I'm gonna start with this note down, take it off, and put it back down, okay? So we're sort of adding a bit of tension at the end there. It's letting go of it, going back to that G, but then it's adding it again. Something, it kind of makes us want something to happen, right? We wanna get rid of that tension. It's like a splinter in your finger. You wanna get rid of it. Now the next thing we're gonna be going to is the B minor. Okay, but instead of doing a regular B minor, that's too on the nose, too obvious, right? For the Dave Rawlings style, at least as I'm interpreting it, as a fellow Dave, uh, I'll say here what I'm gonna do is use this alternate voicing, right? I did a lesson on this a few months ago. This is a, a non-barred way of playing B minor. Now, technically it's a B minor seven, right? Second, open, uh, second, open, second, third. Okay, now, when I taught this, I said sometimes you can leave the high E string open and based on your context or whatever else you're playing, what chord did you play before this chord? What play, chord did you play after? What's the vocal melody doing? There's all these variables all the time. But in this case, that works perfectly because number one, we're getting that, that seventh tone. Okay, that seventh tone is that A note, the same A. That we added to the um, G in the first measure. It's still there, right, in the B minor. And here's the other thing we're doing, is we're gonna use that open string. So what we're gonna use here, I don't know if this is cross-picking exactly, but in the final measure of the B minor here, we're gonna do this. We're sort of gonna sort of pick the thinnest three strings, one at a time. Okay, now, if you kind of fudge them a little bit or add in a note on that one little break in there on the three count, that's okay. It's gonna sound good. Just sort of uh, understand that uh, bass note strum. Okay, totally kind of thing you hear Dave Rawlings would do. Then you would go to the C, okay? And here I'm just going to that A note the same exact way I did for the B. Now in this case, It doesn't necessarily have the same dissonant characteristics as the G, but it is sort of evoking what we did in that first measure, because we did the same thing with the G, right? B minor, C. Okay, then we're gonna go to this C minor. Now, this would be how you would strum it but we're not gonna strum it. What we can do is I was trying to think, how can I play a C minor in a Dave Rawlings style way? And uh, sort of looking around, well, if you, this is a C major, okay? The difference between a major chord and a minor chord is that major third or a minor third. In that case, this note, this is our major third. If we just move that a half step lower in pitch, that becomes a minor third, okay? So this is a C minor. Now I can't play third fret and then first fret, open first fret together. It's just, it's not gonna happen. So what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna do first open, first open first on strings two, three, and four. So this is a C minor, but it's inverted. And what that means is that the bait, the lowest note we're playing in pitch is not the root, right? This is the minor third, this is the fifth, this is the root. And then later on in this same uh, two measure sequence, we can add our pinky on the third fret of the high E string. This is a G, just like the open third string. Okay, so those four notes give us our C minor. It's a C minor with an E bass note, technically, or I guess it's an E flat. But uh, let us look at how we're gonna play that. I'm just gonna do the bass note, sort of strum or just freely pick. But then, 
do that sort of cross picking ish thing on the thinnest three strings just like I did with the B minor okay now I'll say I'll play this all for you but before I do that an alternate way you could do the C minor sequence is to play one zero one and then go up to three zero three and then do three zero four I've seen Dave Rawlings do that when he's playing a C minor before Okay, so let me play this for you twice, and I'll do the C minor as I have it tabbed out initially the first time, and the second time I'll do the alternate ending, okay? And again, just bring in those filler strums as you see fit, right? So that's going to be sequence one. So now let's move on to sequence two. It's another sort of eight measure thing. It's going to be going on a C for two measures, right? C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four to G, two, three, four, G. And then we're going to go to C again, to D, and then D7. Okay, now what can we do there to spice it up? So for the C, the first two Cs, what we're going to do is start off by strumming but we're gonna walk it down. Okay, so start off with a regular C, but then C over B, and then this is like a C over A kind of thing. Or we're gonna keep our index finger right here, but we're just gonna do, this is our C over B, and then our C over A is this open fifth string. And by keeping this open, keeping all those other strings open, it adds a little bit of that dissonance, right? So C over B over A, and we get to the G, and things resolve nicely, okay? Now for the G. All I'm doing there is just doing some basic uh, hammer-ons with my index, uh, middle finger. I'm hammering on from open to second, going back to open, oh, it's on the third string. Then I'm going from open to second again, back to open on the fourth string. Then I'll hammer on from open to second again before I go to open third. Okay? So that first four measures would sound like this. Okay? Now in the second half of sequence two here, we're gonna repeat those two measures of C, but with the walk down, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Now for the second half of sequence two here, I'm gonna start on the C again, but instead of walking down to a C over B and a C over A, I'm just gonna go from a C to a C again, C over B, and then to a D, okay? I just think it sounds better in this particular case, but it's a similar uh, concept to the first line where we're gonna do a strum, bass strum, bass strum, and then a bass note for our start of the D. Okay, I'll play it in full in a second. Now for the D, we wanna end up on this sort of D7, but what we're gonna do in a Dave Rawlings style is use a chromatic double stops here, okay? Um, the double stops meaning we're playing two notes at a time, and chromatic meaning we're moving sort of either up or down in pitch one half step at a time. So if you imagine a D7, just strings two and three, and you went up, two frets, that would be frets four and three, then go down a half step, frets three and two, then frets two and one. So this whole sequence, sequence two, would sound like this. Okay, and we're gonna sort of let that D7 just ring out and be really pregnant with, with anticipation and tension as we get ready to resolve to G, which starts uh, sequence three. So to wrap up sequence one and two here, let me play them uh, back to back and show you how they'll work. I'll do it uh, with a pick and then I'll do it without a pick to show you my sort of finger style approach. Okay, so this will show you uh, sequence one and sequence two and we can see what they sound like. Then we'll move on to the third one. Okay, so starting with... Uh, Sequence one. One, two, ready, go. Sequence two.
okay? And then we'll move into sequence three. Now let me play the same thing for you finger style in case you're curious how that looks, ready? on to sequence three to finish it out. Now sequence three is a longer one. I'm going to handle that in part two, separate video. It's on my website. So look for the link in the description and you can watch that. And again, on my website, y'all, you're going to get the link to the uh, three page uh, song sheet, or it's not a song sheet, it's a tab, um, instructional tab here. So the sequence is all tabbed out and I have on page three, my finger style tabs. Okay. So that's all there for you. A jam track as well, if you want to play along. Um, but I want to keep this one relatively short to get started with, but um, I'll have some Dave Rawlings uh, songs on my website as well, if you want to hear some stuff in his style. So thanks for watching. Check out part two on my website and I'll see you in the next one. Let's go. Bye-bye.